Last night, I was invited to be a part of a conference call for Six Screens of the Watchtower, which is the Jehovah's Witness version of Anonymous. Um, they're a group of people that uh, discuss and uh, pass out information about unjust things that happen in the Jehovah's Witness congregation, not so much a congregation as the Watchtower Society. And they talk about people that have been um, hurt and uh, have been hurt and forced to lose their family or just, you know, have had their lives ruined by the Jehovah's Witness religion. So I was invited by uh, someone by the name of the Printed Truth. I'd like to thank you for inviting me if you happen to be watching. And I was invited to go on and talk about Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, join in. There was a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, active Jehovah's Witnesses, that were there. And it was hosted by Rick Barron, which um, he is a man that was uh, uh, disfellowshipped in Massachusetts. And now he has a website, Six Screens of the Watchtower, and he talks about uh, different different uh, unjust things that happen in uh, the religion. I myself have been a Jehovah's Witness for almost 20 years, 19 years, and that's my entire life. Um, however, I did take a couple of years off and study other religions and, um, you know, study my own religion and, and really kind of, you know, look out, look at it from the outside in. You know, I didn't do my research within the religion because I knew that it would be one-sided. I left the religion, not actually left it, but was absent for a while. And um, it's, it's what made the most sense to me. It seemed to be, out of all the other options, the best choice for me. And, I mean, I studied lots of different religions. I have tons of books on religion. I have the Book of Mormon, Lots of Jehovah's Witnesses books, some Baptist books, uh, some different Bibles. But, uh, you know, I really poured myself into my research because I wanted to find one that suited me. And for me, that was Jehovah's Witnesses. So I went on last night as a Jehovah's Witness to give my views of, uh, you know, our side of the story. Now, in previous videos, I have always, Last night's topic, by the way, was shunning and disfellowshipping or rather disfellowshipping and then shunning people, choosing to shun members of their family uh, for being disfellowshipped. And I have said in previous videos that, to the best of my knowledge, and I said, I've always said that I can only speak for my congregation, and that is that Jehovah's Witnesses, um, you know, it, it wasn't a mandate that we shunned, that it was, it was always a, a personal choice. And for what I have witnessed with my own eyes, I can honestly tell you that it is a personal choice in my congregation. In fact, the last person that I remember being disfellowshipped was um, back when it was a uh, disfellowshipable offense if you were in a um, uh, bi-religious relationship and or were having premarital sex. And, um, and I know for a fact that they did not shun their mother, the kids of the uh, woman that was disfellowshipped, because they still go up and see her. And uh, so, so that's, that's how, how it's always been in my religion and in my congregation. It's been a choice. It's, it's a choice to do that in my congregation. Now, last night after spending, I spent probably five, five and a half hours on this conference call. And it might have went on a lot longer than that. I don't know. I know Rick said that sometimes they go on eight hours or more. So it was it was kind of heartbreaking to, not kind of, it was heartbreaking to hear the stories of all these people that have been hurt by something that I hold so high in my life, something that I love so much, and something that I've put so much of myself into. And for me, someone who tries not to hurt people and someone who tries to help people to the best of my ability. Um, it was, is very heart-wrenching to know that, that something that I love was hurting people. 
And for those of you that know me, you know that there are certain things that I hold as a priority in my life. And, and, and one of those things is, is helping people. And those of you that watch any other of my videos know that I am now a gay rights activist. And openly so. In fact, last night I brought it up several times that I was a gay rights activist. And my congregation knows that I'm a gay rights activist. They also know, I don't have them over here, but they also know that I smoke. And for anyone who's watched my videos, you know that I cuss like a sailor. Now, I'm not baptized, and that's probably why I'm still, uh, why I haven't been kicked out. I can't be disfellowshipped because I'm not baptized, but I can be kicked out or excommunicated. But um, it just, it was, it was, it was very, very difficult to, to listen to those stories and see what was happening. And I knew that, that it was happening to some degree, but to know the level of what was happening. And it's very sad for me, because when I see this happening, I cannot not support it. I cannot in any way, shape, or form support what was happening by the hands of my leaders to these innocent people that were being disfellowshipped for stupid shit like questioning the religion, just questioning certain things. Rick was the fellowship for questioning something that was changed in the Watchtower, I, I believe. It's been a long time since I watched his video on being the fellowship. But it really, really upset me. And it's kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back because over the last couple of years, it seems like as time has gone on, I've lost a little more faith at a time. And I have, I am now more than ever leaning towards being agnostic because of this. Because of this shit that my religion's doing, they are pushing me away from, from what I believe to be true and what I hold in my mind to be true and, and, and what I implement in my life every day. Now, I haven't been to Hall in a while because I, I was pissed off at the hall, and so I uh, took some more time off, and um, actually got in an argument with a couple of the brothers uh, that came to see me several months ago, and hadn't been back since, or hadn't spoken to them since, but they, uh, I don't have it over here either, they uh, left a, a watchtower on my door uh, about a month ago, a couple weeks ago, so a month ago, and it had a passage in, um, written on a post-it on the front of it how um, it was possible for one to access the kingdom of heaven through his or her acts and, uh, you know, being a good person. And it just, it makes me so frustrated to see that people are being disfellowshipped and then shunned by their families over stupid shit. And then here I am, someone who, if I were disfellowshipped or decided to leave the uh, kingdom hall, all my pain that I would go through would be mental. It would not, I would not have any risk of losing one family member over it. My mother would be upset. My father's no longer a Jehovah's Witness, and neither are my five siblings. They all left the hall as well. So my mother and I are the only two remaining Jehovah's Witnesses in the family. And it just, it makes me mad that someone like me, who's, who does all these things, that are considered um, worldly or, uh, you know, sinful, and I'm still in there. I'm still there, and I'm sure my day's coming. I'm sure that, you know, for too long, or especially if, if someone from my congregation hears a recording from last night's telephone call, that I'm going to probably be kicked out. And, and it just upsets me that, that people can be kicked out for the tiniest little things, the stupidest shit. And then here I am, defending them, and, and trying to convert everyone I see, and, and telling them how, how much joy this has brought to my life, and how amazing my life has been because of this. And then I see that it's hurting people, and I see that, that there's a lot of people that, that lives have been devastated because of this religion. I will not... <clears throat> I will not go out against the religion, not out of fear, but I will call them on their